My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we'll see a second example of uh, playing with the camera and we will do an earthquake effect. So the, we'll shake the camera, um, which you might find very useful to uh, in your games for, for cutscenes. Um, I will trigger it again from a, chi um, a switch. So uh, let's call this earthquake switch. Some sprite. Okay. Um, so that was from the previous tutorial. But earthquake switch. Um, and the, the earthquake effect could actually be probably useful in multiple maps of your game. So let's let's do it the clean way. Let's do it in a separate file here. So we'll create a script called um, camera shake, for instance, dot lua. And first, let's see how it will be used. So the standard way to uh, call some code from another script in Lua is to use require camera shake require scripts camera shake and usually uh, the result of require is a, a table, a Lua table that contains functions so we will do it that way camera shake is a table and it contains some functions so we will create a function called, called shake and we will pass the camera here and that's pretty much it for the calling code so if you want to use this effect in multiple maps you you just have to require the script and to, to call that function that we will of course now write um, it's also nice to know that you can use meta tables if you want instead of having um, a table here with a function on it. Um, if you know Lua meta table, you can actually create your function so that it will be used like that. Camera shake directly, just just as if it was an official function in the camera API of Solaris. But that's slightly more advanced. It uses meta tables. Uh, we do it a lot actually in, in our games, so you can check the code. Um, for now, I don't. I really don't think it's necessary to to go that far. Let's just learn how to use a simple require with, um, yeah, a table that contains functions, because this is really the the standard way that that you should at least know. So in our new script here. We create that table. We create a function shake on that table. We'll see what is inside the function, of course, and we return the table. So if you are not a Lua expert, uh, please remember that when you call require, only the first time it will execute the script and return the result to the caller to the script that's called require and if other maps also require the same script um, there is an internal uh, cache system in Lua if you want that remembers the result of the first uh, execution of the script so your table here will be just uh, written again by all subs subsequent calls of require to the same script Okay, um, anyway, the topic of this tutorial is about uh, sh shaking the camera. So how, we, how do we do that? Um, the script I will write here is inspired from one of our, our projects, Zelda Link to the Dream. Uh, by the way, I forgot that I need a parameter here, the camera that I want to shake. Uh, first, let's play the earthquake sound. So I have a sound called Quake in my 
default resources here. Let's also suspend the game. Let's suspend it true. And then we will create um, a horizontal movement um, that goes back and forth to the right and to the left. So it will be, it will repeat itself actually. So one way to do that is to have a local function that we call we will call shake step. Basically, it will create a movement, start it on the camera, and when it ends, it will call shake step again. So let's create the, that movement. The, the speed, so it will be 60 pixels per second. Um, set smooth false, even if it should not have much effect on the camera. Set ignore obstacles true. So that's quite important because um, if I'm on, um, if I'm close to a limit of the map, I still want to, I still want the movement to, uh, to cross actually the limit of the map. Let's say, let's assume that you are in the, not this one, <laughs> any map that, whose size is the size of the screen like this one. If you do the camera shake effect on that map, uh, we want actually to, uh, to go further than the uh, limits of the map. Otherwise the movement will just be stuck and nothing would happen. So it will. It means that a, a few more pixels with, with be, will be displayed temporarily, and I think they will have the color of the the background color of the tile set. But here in our example map, we we don't even even have this problem because we are not close to the borders of the map. I think, <laughs> but you can test it. It's it's interesting. And separators are uh, obstacles for the camera, except when you, when you are actually moving the camera manually. There are separators for the camera only when the camera is tracking the hero. Otherwise, the, the camera is actually allowed to cross separators, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay, let's continue to configure our small movement here. Maximum distance should be only 4 pixels and the angle should be, so it should uh, alternate between uh, right and left, which means 0 radians and uh, pi radians. Um, so I need to remember the last angle, so let's start with zero and let's update it for next time. So one way to uh, alternate between zero and pi is to do pi minus the previous angle. So first it, it's zero, then it will be pi minus zero which is pi. And then, because this function will be called repeatedly, it will be pi minus pi, which is again zero. Um, if it's unclear to you, you, you can also write it with uh, an if then else. It's really a matter of style. Also, uh, something else that, that we want to keep track of is the number of uh, steps that we've done so that we can decide when to stop. So there will be a shaking counter that starts at zero and that is increased every time. And now let's actually start the movement on the camera. And when that small movement step of four pixels is finished, we just need to um, call shake, shake step again 
until a uh, shaking count reaches some maximum value. So let's say nine because it's it's nine in my in the example that I have in a link to the dream. And since it looks good, I'm keeping the same parameters. So if I'm still below nine, I do another step. Otherwise it's finished, and when it's finished you want to unsuspend the game and you want to put the camera back in normal mode which is tracking the hero. Start tracking. So if you write hero here, your hero variable is not declared. Uh, note that when you are in a map script, um, then you have access to all named entities. So here the hero variable does exist. Um, it will be resolved automatically when... Yeah, yeah there is a dynamic lookup system, but uh, you, you don't have that in, in a regular script that is not a map script. Here I'm just in the script folder. This is not a map script, this is just a script. And But uh, thankfully, since we passed the camera as a parameter here... Oh, by the way, same problem with game. I didn't declare game. So I need both the game and the hero. Game is camera get game. And hero is camera get map get hero. So this is declared, this is declared, and everything should be good. And yeah, I need also to bootstrap my process here because I did basically nothing. I, did, I played a sound and suspended the game and declared a function, but right now I haven't called it ever, so I need to call that function. And I think that's it. Yay! It works. That was exactly what I wanted. Um, okay, cool. Let's see how it behaves when we are inside a dungeon here. Um, I happen to have a switch fr still from a previous uh, tutorial. Earthquake switch. So we will do actually pretty much the same thing in our dungeon map. So here the camera is of course tracking the hero but since this room is surrounded by separators everywhere it is fixed. And as soon as I press the button it should shake and now it is allowed to cross separators. Um, yeah, and let's see what happens if we do not ignore the obstacles. Yeah, I was wrong before. <laughs> Separators are actually um, obstacles for the camera and there is no special rule, so it's actually cleaner that, that what I said. Um, a few minutes ago. Separators and map limits are just not traversable by the, the camera, so if, if you create a movement on the camera but there are separators, the camera is stuck. So that's why we really need to ignore the obstacles. Yeah, cool. And uh, finally, I also want to try it on, for instance, that map, Destructibles. So it's also possible to avoid even this duplication of code, even if it's just a few lines, um, by using the, some custom properties on, on switches and also some meta tables. But 
Uh, we'll see that another day. Um, okay, so let's start our game on this map destructibles slash destructibles just to test the same thing but this time the camera is stuck not by separators but by the limits of the map so here it looks really weird because we have this black margin that appeared um, oh and I'm not even on the same map <laughs> I have a, a teletransporter issue here yeah and only the right part of the map actually it only I'm re realizing that only now but um, yeah the shaking effect was not really symmetrical it, it moved only to the right and then to the left and then to, to the right so we could improve the script by moving first so making the first step two pixels to the left and two pixels because it's half of four and then it will look better I think and uh, one final detail is that if I'm not mistaken the pixels um, that were outside the map were using the background color of the tile set so if we try to put some ugly red color we should see some red okay so another in interesting detail to know um, yeah the best is probably still that if you need the camera shaking effect to have separator and separators and to avoid doing it on on the limits of the map directly because um, maybe they won't have the color that you want um, okay I think that's enough for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will see another uh, way of playing with the camera we will resize the camera to give some space for a different kind of HUD and of head up display and I think you you will find this very very useful too um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a lot and if you have any question please join our discord we will be happy to help that's all for now thank you very much bye